This is Lynn Anderson. Very recently, she was the major attraction at the intermission for the rodeo and broke it up at the 1972 State Fair. And she was kind enough to take a little time off. Now, you know, when I went to cowboy movies, and I still, Lynn, am addicted to them, the bad guy always wore black. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not a bad guy. Well, that's, a, that's an old stereotype, but they did give me a white horse. Oh, that makes See, sense. the bad guys were supposed to have the black horses, so I mixed it up, you know. That's fantastic. The good guys had the white horses. I don't know whether it's a problem for our cameraman, because there's great uh, stone. What are those rhinestones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell the kids they're real diamonds, but uh, some of them believe me. <laughs> You know, it used to be in the old days that the opera singers, women opera singers, were always thought to be heavy and fat. <laughs> and, you know, and they were always, and nowadays, they're very attractive. I think there was that same myth about country singers, that they couldn't chew gum and walk at the same time, that they were kind of country bumpkins. You certainly yeah. belie that, and that's not true anymore. Well, it, it takes a little while to, uh, to get people in New York and Los Angeles over, you know, that old stereotype. I don't know why, but uh, for a long time they thought that if you sang country music, you really didn't know how to talk. You know, if they, they, if they put you on and let you sing one song, they would immediately shuffle you off into a corner and not let you open your mouth, you know. It's interesting. I talked to Conway Twitty recently, and he said now, Country and Western singers were very welcome in Vegas, where formerly they were thought to be too sophisticated for them, but they uh, were very accepted there. Now. Well, they've all of a sudden figured out that uh, the people who go to Las Vegas to gamble are the same people who live in Ohio and right. Illinois and Kentucky and right. go to Las Vegas to have a good time, but they still enjoy the same kind of entertainment, and they, they like country music to a certain extent. Uh, it's really popular. What effect? on your career and your whole life did making that fabulous hit Rose Garden have on you? Well, mainly it allowed me to work uh, with different people and, and work uh, some different places that wouldn't be open to me, you know, if it hadn't been for that pop hit. It's like we were saying about, you know, the producers not quite being ready for country music. If you do cross over a little bit into the pop field, then they will, will accept you a little bit better, you know, and it opens the door just a little bit to where you can at least show them what you can do. Speaking about myths, that, that is no longer true either, that people thought if you like country music, you were some kind of a rube. Actually, yeah. it's, it, it really reflects much of the mainstream of our country, I suppose. Well, I got it. See, I, I liked country music when I was going to high school, and I was living in California, and it wasn't very fashionable then to like country music, especially if you were like 15 or 16 years old. So I really got it. You know, everybody made fun of me. But I, I think we've kind of uh, proved to a lot of people that country music is uh, probably music that more people can understand and, and more people can live with and identify with than any other kind of music that there is. You are an articulate young lady, I must <laughs> say. And you're a mother, too. You have a cute little uh, one-and-a-half-year-old little girl. Right, And a yeah. husband in Nashville. Yes, sure do. He's a good songwriter and a producer. He produces my records. That keeps it all in the yeah, family, Yeah, that's huh? right. It's a little bit difficult, though. Uh, most ladies don't have the same uh, problems I have with my husband. It's a little rough when you have to, <laughs> you know, when you say, well, I'm going to work now. Uh, I'll be back in three weeks. I'm going out with the guys, you know. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you travel with a band, it's a little difficult, but he understands very well. I would think, though, that you'd be kind of a pet of the band, that they would really be all like big brothers to you, look after you. Well, it's very much that way. I also have a girl drummer, which helps. Oh. Uh, we room together, you know. <laughs> we can kind of gang up on the guys and go, go have our hair done or, or fix each other's head or whatever, you know. So it works out very well that way. But and also, are... another new dimension to your career this season, you are on some of the Dean Martin shows. Now, that's a real switch for a country and western singer. Yeah, I'm really excited about that, because I can do some different things. With the Lawrence Welk show, you know, we used to get to do some dancing and right. some skits and all that stuff. But since I left that show, it's been pretty much, you know, stand there and sing your song. And maybe if you're lucky, Johnny Carson will talk to you. <laughs> but maybe right, you'll just right. get a chance to stand there and that's sing right. the song, and then they shuffle you off. But this time, uh, they're going to let me come back and, and uh, you know, do a little dancing and, and uh, uh, do some of the little comedy sketches. Would you like to do that. some funny lines? Oh, sure. I, you know, I love to have fun with it. And I'd, I'd much, rather, uh, uh, much rather work a little more and do a little bit more in a show than, than sit around and do nothing. The part about television that... I don't like, I love to do it, but the part that's the worst is that to do your little two minutes in the show, you have to sit around for three days, you know, <laughs> right. waiting for everybody else to get their camera shots and their 
costumes and all that. So I'd much rather be doing a, a little more than... You, you certainly are versatile. Now, when we saw you at the State Fair, you were such a big hit at the intermission of the rodeo. That's so much different from an intimate nightclub room that you might do. Now you're facing 15,000 people. Is it hard for you to feel a, a relationship with the audience? Well, um, I hope not. <laughs> we try to, to get as close to the audience as we can. The only part that really bothers me about any kind of a show is if I can't physically get to the audience. I, have to, I can't stand to stand out in the middle of an arena and not be able to see the people. You know, I've got to get over like, to the edge of the stage where I can talk to them and, and talk to them as individuals. I think you know, where you lose it sometimes is if you just stand there and say, there is a crowd there. <laughs> and you forget the fact that they are individuals and that they're people that you have to, right. uh, you have to make them like you. Well, you it's like it. TV. We kind of pretend and we look into the lens. And oh, it's a lens. We like to think that there's a person there. Yeah. And I think that if you <laughs> think of it on a one-to-one -one relationship, it's, it's a more personal and friendly kind of approach. I think you, you, you have to keep sight of the fact that it's individuals that are watching you, and they're going to make a, you know, an individual personal judgment of you. Whether they, it's, the only thing that it comes down to is whether they like you or not, and they have to make their decision Did you, not meeting you. Do you have your, a memento of your a big hit record, a gold record? Uh, Rose Garden. Yeah, uh, gee, there are so many mementos of that record. That'd you know, it's lot. it's uh, all the records that it broke. Yeah, the record it's, it's broke done right so right. much for me. You know, and we've done. You're uh, ready for another one, I presume. Well, I guess everybody is, but I've <laughs> kind of become realistic about it. That kind of a record, uh, that large a hit, just doesn't come very often. It sold more records than any other record that year. You know, and and. Uh, uh, for me to ever think of having another one like that is just the odds, you know, are just virtually impossible. So I have to be kind of uh, realistic and realize that just about anything I do is not going to sell quite as much, but uh, we're going to work hard anyway. You have youth on your side, and I hope the next time you're in town you'll pay us a visit down to the studio. We thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy talking to you.